Welcome to The Skill Ranch. This podcast is designed to equip entrepreneurs, professionals, and consultants with skills to impact tomorrow's work environment. Now here's your host, Bilal. Welcome to The Skill Ranch podcast. On today's episode, I'm joined by Paul. Paul possesses an extensive knowledge of employee engagement and innovation. First and foremost, he considered himself to be a sustainability crusader. Sustainability, the process of waste elimination and prevention for the purpose of resource life extension. Something every business leader and employee should be focused on. Even with over 20 years of delivering sustainability success, he gets just as excited today as he did when he saw his clients create winning cultures and sustainable businesses. Welcome to the Skill Ranch podcast. How are you doing today, Paul? Absolutely wonderful, Bilal. Thanks for having me. That's a very impressive uh, headline that you shared with me, Paul. For our audience, could you please share a bit more about your background and what you have been doing in the field of performance management? Uh, Absolutely. Uh, Well, my career actually began with the United Parcel Service uh, in Canada. I spent 14 years with UPS, uh, began my career as a package car driver, um, advanced into supervision, managing operations, uh, then went into sales, Uh, managed the UPS call center in Canada and ultimately a sales team in Mississauga, Ontario for the better part of uh, five years before I finished up my career with UPS. Um, The level of education uh, as it related to performance at UPS was exceptional. Uh, After UPS, I worked for a Quebec consulting firm that specialized in implementing lean manufacturing practices, also known as the Toyota production system. Uh, It was with this firm that I found my real passion in life, performance management. For the past 20 years, I've been an independent consultant. My clients have included some of Canada and Columbia, South America, industry leaders. Uh, Columbia uh, is uh, currently where I live, Columbia, South America. Nice. So you work all across North America and now you are exploring the South American market. Regarding performance management, Paul, for the audience, could you please share what is performance management, the definition, how do we see it within businesses nowadays? Well, that's probably the key word below definition. So let me begin by that. Um, Management for me is the coordination and administration of a set of fundamentals, which are used to achieve individual or business goals. The key word there being fundamentals. So imagine a sports team in terms of performance management. Coaches are responsible to engage their players in a set of activities that are designed to improve the team's performance. Teams don't just go out there and play games. They are consistently practicing on a daily basis. uh, And those coaches are taking them through a set of activities that are designed to improve the team's performance. The difference between winning and losing teams will come down to practicing the right fundamentals that leads to continuous performance improvement for that team. Talk to any of the greatest athletes and they will tell you their success was directly related to their ability to improve their performance in every aspect of their game, regardless of how small the details uh, details are. Give you one other example or um, a quote that came from Michael Jordan. You can practice eight hours all day, but if you're practicing the wrong fundamentals, you're only gonna get better at doing something the wrong way. So it is critical that you are practicing the right performance and proven fundamentals. Yeah, that, that's very interesting that we always focus on that you have to give the hard work within whatever you're doing or practice and be persistent. But if your vision and goals are not directly directed towards what you want to achieve in life they will end up being not where you actually visualize yourself so paul you did briefly touch about the importance of performance management in your work that you did as in consultancy industry also in ups what are few of the important point in your experience 
why performance management should be an important part of a company's uh, vision, company's goals, and also for individuals. How do you see that? Well, I think that's actually a very good point, Bilal. It is not just companies, but it is individuals. So when I talk about performance improvement, I'm talking in the context of a business and an individual's career. So the fundamentals that we talk about are applicable to businesses and individuals as well. And so without the daily practice of a set of fundamentals, and look, everybody has what they would believe are the right business fundamentals to practice, but without having those set of fundamentals, individual or business performance improvement is going to be a hit and miss at best. At worst, businesses or careers are gonna end in failure. Now, today, most businesses would not be considered to be exceptional organizations. Statistically, this means that 13% of an organization's employees, those organizations that are not exceptional, are working actively to sabotage their business. That's right. Those 13% of employees are looking to poke holes in the company's ship. Now, it would be far better for a business to actually pay those employees to stay home. That's how detrimental it is for an organization not to have a performance improvement system that is designed to engage employees for the purpose of innovating. The, challenge, the challenges, by the way, don't end with the 13%. It's also estimated that most businesses have 53% of their employees disengaged. They do a good job if their managers tell them what to do and how to do it. Managers will also have to follow up with this group of individuals to ensure the job is done well. In this scenario, managers are nothing more than babysitters. So if an organization has any hope for the future, they must find ways to have the 66% of the disengaged employees to join the 34% of employees that are engaged actively in participating in the company's success. Now, for and during my career, what I've come to understand and believe in is that a business must have a performance improvement system where fundamentals are practiced by every individual and the fundamentals become part of an organization's DNA. Today, more than ever, the, with the rapid change and demands that companies have, companies must find a way to have highly engaged employees in innovation. And in my opinion, that be, be, begins with the development of a performance improvement system that will be adopted organizational wide. And let me just highlight a few more things as it relates to the importance, why it is so important. Um, if you are familiar with energy management, um, Bilal, you get, a, you get an energy bill every month for your location, right? Yeah, yeah we do. But you have absolutely no idea how much energy is being consumed on a daily basis how that energy is being consumed. In other words, you get the bill 30 days later, but you have no idea how that energy is being consumed and by what. And we call this practice learning to see. So if you are involved in energy management, one of the first things you wanna to look to do is to implement an energy management system, which is gonna allow you to have real time data in order to make informed decisions about steps you take to reduce your energy. Uh, we work with many organizations uh, in implementing energy management systems. Now, as it relates to a business and improving performance, there must be a performance improvement system in place that allows all individuals and the organization to be able to see where the challenges are and to be able to overcome those challenges. So that is why a performance improvement system is critical for an organization so that the people understand what are the fundamentals they must practice on a daily basis. And I'll give you the first one. Every individual must possess a zero tolerance for waste. Waste is anything that adds absolutely no value for internal or external customers. That is fundamental number one. If there's anything an organization does and adopts, that must be that fundamental. It is the part of everyone's DNA they simply do not accept waste in their value streams. Hmm? Nice. And, 
And so you mentioned a points about why it is important. So let's take an example of an organization A that wishes to implement this system of performance management. And as we discussed just uh, before that it is on an individual as well on a corporate level. So how do we go about like starting the program, like the processing of the program, then working towards how do we implement? And then finally, how do we ensure that our performance management program that we implement do bring us positive results at the end of the year? Okay. So step one, and I'll go back to uh, my, my work with organizations. Uh, the first step is that the decision must be made at the highest level that an organization is going to implement a performance improvement system and everybody needs to get on that train. If you're not on that train, you should be looking to free up your career for a better opportunity in life. And I don't mean to be a little bit uh, harsh with those words, but the bottom line is, is within organizations, they have to make a decision which direction they're going. And every individual within that organization needs to be on that train. So that actually is step number one for us. Step number two then becomes the a need to implement training for the organizations. So if, if I'm going to work with an organization that has 100 employees, for example, well, you don't simply want to implement that system. The first thing you're going to do, so the leaders made the decision to make the fundamental changes. The second step is then to announce what the organization is going to do, why they're going to do it. With that announcement comes the training of all employees within the organization. Because anytime change is happening within a business, if there isn't a clear understanding by employees, there's going to be fear amongst the employees. It's actually gonna be counterproductive to uh, employee engagement, increasing employee engagement. So there must be some form of training program that is utilized in order to get the employees on board. And when I say on board, I don't mean that they're all happy as can be and they're looking to adopt the system. No, that's not going to happen for a period of time because the employees are going to look for the business leaders to prove to them that the changes they are implementing are changes that are going to actually continue. I mean, many organizations implement a new program. And if you talk to employees, it's called the flavor of the month. So it is critical. First is the major, the decision by the senior leader in the organization, everybody on the train, then is the announcement and then the training. And then the last aspect is then beginning to implement the fundamentals. And those fundamentals actually incorporate uh, and provide the answer to what you had indicated. That is, how do you ensure that you are successful? Well, the right fundamentals are going to include that process. For example, the work we do with organizations, we believe there are six fundamentals. That first fundamental is to possess a zero tolerance for waste. Fundamental number two is to habitually overcome limiting paradigms. It doesn't matter who it is, whether it be an organization or individuals, we all have limiting paradigms to prevent us from achieving the level of success we desire. In my case, from a health perspective, it's been my addiction to Pepsi. So I'm currently in the process of trying to overcome my addiction to Pepsi that I've had for a very long time. Fundamental number three is to become resource life extension. That means is that we take all resources we have within an organization. And by the way, human resources, technical resources, we then take steps to ensure that we extend the life of all resources within our organization. Fundamental number four, always measure your engagement and innovation levels. So when you talk about how do we ensure that we are successful, well, you do that with fundamental number four. You must have a process in place that is measuring the engagement levels within your organization and innovation levels, a structured approach to doing that. And so when you look at the performance improvement, that's where this is going to come in. Are our people engaged? When I talk to you about the 13%, the 53%, well, that's why we must measure engagement. Uh, most recently, uh, had a presentation that was made to our group. Uh, we absolutely love what this organization is doing. 
It's called psychological performance. It's actually move. It's how you actually engage employees more by creating a psychologically safe work environment for employees. So that's part of fundamental number four. Number five, adopt lifelong learning practices. So if we're working with an organization, what are they doing to continually improve the learning of their employees? But let me add this, is that in the six fundamentals, every employee has a responsibility themselves to practice the fundamentals. It is not the responsibility of an organization to make sure, for example, in your case, Bilal, if you were working for a company, it is not their responsibility to ensure that you get all of the, the training you need. You have an individual responsibility to lifelong learning practices, especially if you want to be successful in your career. And the sixth fundamental, and this is very important, is to share the guidance of a coach or mentor. Talk to some of the greatest leaders in the world, and they will tell you, it doesn't matter who you are, the most successful person, you need a coach or mentor that is there to help you get to where you ultimately want to go. And they don't do that by telling you, they do that by asking what are very powerful questions that allow you to examine your current practices or examine what your path is that you've designed for moving forward. But everybody needs to have a, a coach or mentor. And let me clarify this final thing related to a coach or mentor. When I say everybody needs a coach or mentor, well, there are organizations that can go out and hire all of the coaches and mentors they want. Well, you don't have to be in that situation. The internet provides all of us the opportunity to get our own personal coach and mentors. Okay, we don't have to go out and pay big dollars to do that. So let me give you an example. If you were looking to learn a lot more about marketing, well, why wouldn't you connect with Gary Vaynerchuk, who has 4 million subscribers on his YouTube channel, okay, who is one of the leaders in terms of um, social media. There's an example where you can be getting all of the free advice you want. So there's no reason that any individual should be saying, I can't get a coach or mentor. That would just, to me, would be unacceptable. My question would be, if, if you were on our team, Bilal, I would say, who's your coach or mentor? So if you're an engineer, you're an engineer in some specific field, let's say, who's your coach or mentor? Who's helping you to advance what it is? Who's helping you to create new visions in your mind of what can be done in the future? Okay, so the, the final component there in terms of implementing is that the organization must be fanatical about having a performance improvement system. And everybody within the organization must be demonstrating their compliance to those six fundamentals or five fundamentals or four, whichever system an organization looks to adopt. Thank you so much for that, Paul. Those were very important six point in how in depth you explain for the audience. And regarding these points, I, I recently saw that uh, you have started a business called ISA. Uh, you're moving into the field of entrepreneurship. So for the audience, could you please share how ISA can help you develop your performance management program and the value it brings to its clients and customers? Okay, uh, related to ISA, we are the Engagement Innovation and Sustainability Alliance. The reason ISA was developed is that with over 20 years of experience as an independent consultant, I've seen firsthand and know firsthand the challenges that independent consultants face. And if you believe, as many do, that the primary um, uh, functions of a business is marketing and innovation, ask yourself this question. How much time do independent consultants have to market and innovate? And most of those answers are going to be, they don't have the time to market and innovate. This is one of the reasons why in 2013, there was an article that was written about uh, consulting on the cusp of change. And in that article, they predicted that independent consultants were gonna take a major um, chunk of the revenues of the major consulting firms. That never came to realization. Well, the reason that never came to realization is the major consulting firms 
have the brand recognition, whereas independent consultants do not. So if independent, if the two primary functions of a business is to market and innovate, and independent consultants don't have the time to market and innovate, how are they able to actually get to the levels that they need to be? So ISA is building a global alliance of independent consultants. We are looking to help them overcome what we call the independence paradigm. Just because you're independent doesn't need, mean you need to be alone. So independent consultants would consider ISA as their outsourced marketing and innovation group. We are delivering a digital platform for independent consultants to be able to increase their level of revenues, to be able to uh, develop additional project opportunities that go above and beyond what their scope of work traditionally is. For example, over the net, between now and 2030, 30% 30 of everybody's job is going to be impacted by IoT, the Internet of Things. So I would ask the question for independent consultants, what are you doing to ensure that you are able to deliver IoT solutions in some way or another or a digital platform to your clients? If you yourself are not utilizing a digital platform, then I would suggest that there is a risk associated with their career or their ability to develop the kind of uh, revenues they are looking to, to see. So ISA is the marketing and innovation group for independent consultants. Independent consultants can join our alliance. It is free to join our alliance. We have free services. There are obviously paid services. Um, so we have the digital platform to deliver the um, consulting work for clients. But what we also do is we provide a group that allows independent consultants to deliver innovative solutions to their clients through IoT technologies. So they can participate at a very low level or they can participate at a very high level in the development of IoT solutions for their clients. Yep. Thank you so much, Paul, for joining us today and sharing knowledge about performance management as well as ISA. Bilal, I certainly appreciate the time with you today. Um, don't hesitate to contact me if you ever have any questions, uh, but it was a, a pleasure to join you. And for our audience, Paul, detail will be shared uh, along with the video. If you have any question regarding ISA and want to become part of the Alliance, feel free to reach out to him. And if you want to be on part of the Skill Ranch podcast, we are starting our season two shortly. Uh, feel free to connect with me. And thank you so much once again, Paul. And it's a pleasure having you today. My pleasure, Bilal. Have a great day, sir. Bye-bye. So thank you everyone and I'm looking forward to having you all on the next episode of Skill Ranch podcast.